Good evening, everybody. We've been talking about slope, and before I teach you what I'm going to teach you today about slope, I want you to try this. What's the slope of this? Pause and figure that out. With that in mind, hold that aside. Don't get rid of it. Don't erase it, whatever that. Put it off to the side. And today I want to teach you how to calculate negative slope. Make that the title on the next free page in your math notebook, then close that up and put that aside as well. Maximize that brain power. And off we'll go. So we've been talking about slope for a while. First strategy to calculate slope was to see how much y changes when x goes up by 1. So here, x goes up by 1, y goes up by 2. x goes up by 1, y goes up by 2. x goes up by 1, y goes up by 2. So this had a slope of 2. And we didn't want to use that strategy because it wasn't obvious how much when x changed by 1. This doesn't show me what happens when x changes by 1. So we can go like any two changes, 0 to 6 and 3 to 27, and then find the y to x ratio 4. Those are our two strategies for finding slope. Both work equally well. Um, there's situations when I use one. There's situations when I use the other. And works great. So... We've always done, if you think about slope, we've always done ones where the, the line slants upward and we end up with a positive number for slope. They've always been, you know, this direction. So, you know, this on the last one, or I'll just do this one. This line, x goes up by 1, y goes up by 1, x goes up by 1, y goes up by 1. So this has a slope of 1. And anytime a line slants increasing uh, intervals along the x, we've always had a positive number for the slope. Uh, sometimes line slant downward, we would call this a, we called this a decreasing interval back a little while back, whereas x goes up, y goes down. You know, over time they get closer to home or, you know, something like that. Lines that slant down are going to have a negative slope. Lines that slant up are going to have a positive slope. And we've always done the positive slopes we're probably really good at. And I asked you before to calculate a negative slope. So this line we would say slant. And so it's going to end up having a negative number for the slope. And I want to tell you how that works today. Um, first thing to notice is to think, I would think about what a line that slopes down means, because we've gone abstract now, where this is just y and this is just x, and they don't stand for anything. When we first did this, a lot of time this was like time, minutes, hours, whatever. And this was like distance. And when lines slope down on those distance of time graphs, it was like something was getting closer to home or coming back, something like that, going towards zero distance away. And so negative slopes, I want you to think about are ones like that, where the thing would be getting closer if we did a time distance graph. We're not going to call it that. It's still just going to be y and x. If you're comfortable saying this slants down versus, say, this slants up, that's okay. So the calculation is not too hard. We still do the same thing. You'll notice here we're doing the easy ordered pair strategy. There's an easy ordered pair there. There's an easy ordered pair there. We always check x increasing, right? So here we've always gone increasing on x. So here when x increases by 3, y actually decreases. Instead of y going up by some amount, y is going down by some amount, and so we're going to just make that a negative change for the y. So y increases by 3. It moves 3 in the positive direction. Remember on the x-axis, this is positive, this is negative. So x is moving 3 in the positive direction here. y is moving down, which on the y-axis is negative. The negative numbers are down here. The positive numbers are up here. So y is moving down by 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 6. So y is changing by negative 6. We're saying negative because it's going toward the negatives in the negative y direction. So then the y to x ratio is um, negative 6 to 3. And negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2. We would say that line has a slope of negative so lines that slant downward are going to have a negative number for their slope of positive. So we can go back to this one. This had a slope of positive 1. On this one, each time x goes up by 1, y goes down by 1. So this would have a slope of negative 1. That's how it works. Very similar. You've just got to pay attention to direction now. Am I going up or down? 
Um, same thing goes when you have ordered pairs instead of a graph. Here, each time x goes up by 1, y goes down by 4. Each time x goes up by 1, y goes down by 4. x goes up by 1, y decreases by 4. So this is the other strategy. When x increases by 1, how much does y change by? So here we would say this relation has a slope of negative 4. Each time x increases by 1 has a negative slope. y is going to decrease while x increases. Okay. Open your math notebook. Let's do a couple things together. Uh, first things first, I want you to have a version of this. You don't have to copy this precisely with the graph paper, but I would make yourself um, a coordinate plane, maybe change colors and show, you know, this line slants up versus this line slants down. So you're going to want to talk when a line slants up, the slope is positive. When a line slants down, the slope is negative. That's the first thing to know. So pause here and give yourself an approximation of this page. Second thing to be able to do is to calculate a negative slope. So here is a, an example of a negative slope. This you're going to have to do some work to get this on here. Sorry. Um, if you're coming to class, I'll give this one to you uh, printed out. So this is an example. You'll notice here x goes by ones. So it looks to me like we can use the first slope strategy. x goes up by 1, y changes by what? So here, when x changes by 1, y decreases by 5. x increases by 1, y decreases negative by 5. x increases by 1, y decreases by 5. So we would say this has a slope of negative 5 because each time x increases by 1, y decreases by 5. And we would call that negative 5. That is how you find a negative slope from a graph. And again, notice the line slants down, we would say. That is a decreasing interval and a negative slope. Okay. Uh, when you're ready, unpause, and we'll also do an example where we have ordered pairs. So this is also going to have a negative slope. Uh, you'll notice I can't use the x increases by 1 strategy here because x doesn't increase by 1, it increases by 2. So I'm going to use any two easy ordered pairs. Let's just say that one and that one. Here, when x increases by 2, y decreases by 5. So when I find my y to x ratio for that, y decreased by 5, y x increased by 2, negative 5 divided by positive 2 is negative 2 and a half slope. Negative slope. And that's, oh, sorry, this is what we do. And that's it, y'all. Um, I hope that made tons of sense. I hope it's not a big change from anything we've done with slope before. And uh, if you need to give either of these a watch again to kind of get your handle around negative slope, that's great. If not, you're all set. See you tomorrow.